Hello everyone, reporting today for First of Kids Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 14712 Ruckus Robotics from New York. They competed at the New York St uh, New York Championship this year, where they went 6-0 in quals, perfect record, and then they were the winning Alliance captain, Think Award winner, and second Inspire Award recipient. Absolutely fantastic team, looking to compete in Houston in just a few weeks, and they have so many innovative features on their robot, really effective rake system, awesome one-way gates for the deposit, and just effective sensor usage throughout. So I can't wait to jump into this behind the box, coming up on First Big Snap. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay guys, so let's get started just with the drivetrain and overall robot form factor. You know, definitely a lot of cool colors going on there. Um, and obviously, you know, you have the capabilities to make uh, CNC or machined uh, drive plates. So I see that you have like the GoBuilda structure on the inside, but then custom drive plates on the outside. What was the reasoning behind that? All right, so we can uh, first like just showcase the underneath of our drivetrain. Sorry. Ah. So, for this year's drivetrain, we wanted to mainly go for a go build a uh, mainly modified go build a straight for drivetrain because in the beginning of the season, we just wanted to create a robot as quickly as possible so we can prototype with many different solutions, which is why we decided to go for a go build a chassis instead of a custom one. And then as for our drivetrain motors, we have 435 drive RPM motors. So this allows us to go across the field really, really quickly. And we also went for a uh, around 16 by 16 inch chassis and this allows us to go between the trusses pretty easily so that way we can get some quick cycle times awesome yeah and so you know with the drive trainer another question i have i see uh you know obviously the fantastic side plates on the outside and then you have these uh angled and you know curved bumpers looks like around your robot are those also aluminum or are those 3d printed those are 3d printed parts that we made in-house mm -hmm. Yeah, and have you had any issues like with the structural rigidity of those parts or has everything really been pretty, you know, pretty secure, nothing breaking? So we, funny enough, have had some problems with the bumpers because of the way that we hang. When we come down from the hang, the robot lands on these two front bumpers. So originally before we uh, went for a second version of them, they were cracking just from the impact of hitting the ground. But we made them thicker and added some more supports. Okay, inside awesome. of bumpers which helped a lot great yeah and you know now moving on i think one of the greatest parts of your, your robot is your entire intake system and there's just a lot going on so why don't we start with a brief overview of everything and then we'll jump into the specific parts okay so just to overview our uh, intake system we have a one 435 r uh sorry one 1150 rpm motor uh running our entire intake assembly so we first have a one roller in, uh, in the front of six surgical, small su surgical tubing rollers. And then this allows us to very quickly intake these. <laughs> so as you can see, it goes in pretty fast. And then after this, we have a, uh, we have a counter roller on the inside. We have one counter roller on the inside that allows us to quickly pick it up. And then we have one final, uh, uh, go build a compliant wheels that finally pushes it in and through to the deposit. Awesome. Yeah. So with that, you know, definitely, I would say a fairly standard common intake archetype, but you guys have made it work extremely, extremely fluidly, which I think is going to be huge uh, at, at Worlds. So with that, what do you think are some of like the biggest improvements you made to it over the season or like some decisions that you made that just really leveled up uh, how effective your intake was? Yeah, so first for the first qualifier we had, we actually did not have a roll counter roller in this bottom. We just had a really, really thin piece of 3D print that would just glide along the bottom uh, tile. And while that worked somewhat, uh, we found that adding a roller really, really increased the reliability on getting it off the ground. 
And the second thing is just make sure you have a really, really fast motor. So before we tested with a couple different motors and we found that 1150 RPM, around 5.3 to 1 gear ratio, allows us to really, really quickly intake the motors up into the deposit. So as you can see, our deposit, our intake time is around 0.1 in a second. It just really quickly just zaps in all the way to our deposit. Yeah. Additionally, originally we had a second set of compliant wheels instead of the tubing, mm -hmm. but the the compliant wheels were too close to the ground. So when we were intaking, they would sort of push the pixel down instead of back mm -hmm. and it would that well. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. And as far as sensor use goes uh, on, on the intake, like the active portion of the intake itself, do you have any sensors? What do you use them for? Uh, you know, if you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, so um, uh, as part of the intake process, uh, when the pixels get, you know, in the, get into the deposit of the box, the tray, uh, we have a color sensor at the back that lets us track how many pixels we've intake. Mm -hmm. And this is really important for our intake process because, you know, uh, when because the intake is really, really fast at picking up pixels, it's really easy to pick up additional ones. Uh, and so this has to be, to be tuned it really, really, uh, really precisely. So it knows right when the second pixel gets in there. So you, it doesn't allow the driver to pick up any more and actually ejects any that might already be in the system. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you know, with that, I think, uh, pixel detection is something we've seen a lot of teams do. Do you guys have something that like uh, notifies the drivers, you know, a light or rumble on your controller or anything like that if you uh, if you have the two pixels so you can just get going quicker? Yeah, so driver one gets a, about around a half second rumble right when the pixels first detected, right when the second pixels first detected. So it was immediately, oh, I've got two, I can leave uh, and not even have to worry about outtakings. That'll just happen as it drives away. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, now going on to one of the really, really cool parts of your robot and why I was excited to interview you guys is the rake. We've seen so many different solutions to intaking from the stack. Uh, this year, you know, whether you have your claws or your grippers and everything like that. But you guys have definitely come out with something I haven't seen many other teams do. So why don't you just talk through it and then we'll, uh, you know, dive into the details. Okay, so uh, coming into the New York City Championships, we wanted to be we wanted to be able to make sure that we can intake from the stacks as intaking from the stacks uh, allows us to uh, collect pixels while we're not interfering with our alliance partners who might be collecting from the wing. Mm -hmm. So we came up with multiple different solutions. Uh, one being like an active uh, intake roller that could with an adjustable height. But we just wanted to create something really easy and efficient. So we started by creating something called this rake. So this rake is operated with one single servo. And then this basically just comes down and then we have a uh, we have six uh, surgical tubing, uh, ex surgical tubings over here that would basically come down and grab the top two pixels from the stack. Mm -hmm. And then when we drive backwards, the top two pixels from the stack would fall off, and just basically, uh, basically allowing us to intake with our active intake. And we found that this was really, really efficient and fast, and worked really, really well for us at NYP Championships. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys went six and zero, and then also uh, did extremely well in limbs. You know, winning it out as the winning lines captain. So, with with the rake, uh, a couple of questions I have there: Was the decision to use surgical tubing was it just because it was like the first thing you tried, or like did you notice that you needed the compliance uh, of the surgical tubing noodles as opposed to like a hard 3D printed um, rake, for example? Yeah, so for the original design, it was actually more of a shape like this, where it was just one L, and the goal was to get it right in the middle of the pixels, but we found that it was really difficult to precisely align with the center of the pixel, so we thought it would just be better to have a wider um, range, and we realized that we need something that's compliant for that. So the two things we tried were these tubes, and we also just went print this, uh, the back part of the rake is printed using TPU. Mm -hmm. So when we did that, we just added little like uh, basically thin tubes that printed up and those were pretty good, but they weren't as rigid as the tubing. Mm -hmm. So when it went inside, it didn't pull it that well. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. So now moving on to your deposit, you know, once you guys have the pixels into your robot, how does your deposit work? What's going on there? So first, uh, wait, can you intake two pixels? Yes, we can. So first, just to demonstrate this, we have a uh, one-way gate. Yeah, we have a one-way gate system over here that we were actually inspired by the Bluebot builders 
uh, like early on in the season. Yeah, that's so awesome. Right here we have, uh, this is actually printed in place. So we originally, we our source of inspiration for this was from a, uh, there was an infinity cube from Thingiverse online. So it was a printed in place like fidgety toy where it had like a small affluence in between that really worked really well. So we kind of implemented that in here where we printed like a small axle in place for two of these one-way gates. And this allowed us to uh, uh, make, make sure that the, once the pixels slide in, uh, they couldn't fall back out from the front. And this worked really well for us throughout the season. Yeah, wow, that is that is really awesome. You know, it's really great when you can see like these small little details on teams, uh, robots, and I think a lot of teams would really benefit uh, from something like this. So now, you know, you have the one-way gate and you have the pixels in your deposit. How do you go about actually releasing them onto the backdrop? Yes, so we have uh, two different methods for releasing pixels onto the backdrop. First, our first method is to just releasing both of them at the same time. So we normally release both of the pixels at the same time as you just saw over there. When we have two white pixels where the position, uh, location of the pixel doesn't matter that much, but for more precise placements such as mosaics and stuff, we can release one at a time. So as you saw over here, so we tuned the uh, serve over here to get the exact right timing where it just allows one to drop. And this allows us to get pretty uh, precise mosaic placements in our teleop. Yeah, so, you know, with that, um, as you said, you know, you tuned it. Have you had any issues with the tuning? Like, you know, when you go to practice versus in competition, the drops are slightly different, things like that, or has it really been very consistent throughout? Um, one thing to, it was relatively consistent, but the timing is really, really tight. It has to be, uh, pretty much exactly 99 milliseconds. It was 100, it dropped both. If it was 98, it didn't drop the first one. Uh, so this, what this meant is uh, in, in software, we had to improve the loop times as much as possible, make them as fast as possible uh, using a whole array of software um, from like bulk reading to caching, uh, to like not writing the same power to the motors over and over. And we, got, we were able to get it down to around uh, three or four milliseconds every loop. And so that's what it really allows the consistency uh, is being able to update it as quickly as possible as soon as the driver presses it. That's awesome. Yeah, no, really, really great. And so from the arm uh, or, you know, like your rotation axis on, on the deposit, anything special going on there? Or is it just really simplicity is key with that part of the design? Yeah, so our main focus for this year is actually the uh, keeping everything as simple as possible, but using uh, getting everything to its maximum effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So this is really demonstrated here where we just used two go build a speed servos. So we, we were thinking of using uh, torque servos or axon servos, but at the end of the day, we just wanted to keep things as simple as possible and effective as possible. And these two go build a servos have worked really well for us this season. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, you know, guys, I think you've built just an incredibly effective robot. It's a very good lesson to teams out there, like how building a simple but very effective robot can really take you very far in the competition this year and, you know, for good reason. Um, so I'm really, really impressed by it. And now looking forward to Worlds, you know, you guys have had about a month or a couple weeks uh, since, about six, seven weeks since your uh, New York championship. So are there any changes you want to highlight since then? You know, what's the plan coming into Worlds uh, or do you want to keep it kind of under wraps? All right, so we've made a couple changes. Uh, I'll just start, start off with the mechanical changes we made. So first, they were our side plates. So we originally cut uh, custom CNC side plates out of the aluminum composite panel. So I actually bought those panels on Amazon for 10 bucks, which was, it was like two, uh, two feet by two feet uh, aluminum composite panels. And while they worked a little bit and they like looked really nice, they just were not strong enough to uh, withstand the match rigor. So during our chance, they actually got broken in half, like down the middle. So we replaced this with uh, custom aluminum, aluminum side plates from uh, Send Cause Send mm -hmm. with the 25% discount, which worked really nice for us. And then another change that uh, we were currently still in the process of finalizing is for our intake, we're actually making a cover that cover up, covers up the gap between the first set of rollers and the second set of rollers. Mm -hmm. And that way we had some, uh, like maybe like 5% of the time, the pixels would like fall out and eject like between the rollers. Mm -hmm. So we're just finalizing the cabs for that. And finally, the last change we're making is we're actually uh, getting a two plus four and a two plus three configurable auto that our programmer can talk about. Yeah, and what really made that possible is um, you know, we got some vertically sprung odometry here. Um, 
And so, you know, the dominant trail allows us to move really precisely and have good, have good local localization. Uh, but that's part of what we're working on is using the April tags to figure out where on the field we are so we can reset our position to reduce as much energy as possible. And uh, especially with, the, you know, the rate having a really wide range, it allows it to be a little bit inaccurate and still, still work. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, you know, Ruckus Robotics, I cannot wait to see how you guys do at Worlds. I think you have a, a very, very good chance of making a deep run uh, in Houston this year. I'm very excited to see how it goes. You know, I think the rake is going to be a huge success uh, in matches and, you know, just overall simplicity will prove effective in teleop. So thank you so much for this interview. I think teams will benefit a lot from learning about your guys' robot and best of luck to you in Houston in just a couple weeks. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas and this is Team 14712, Ruckus Robotics. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.